it's my great honor, a great honor uh, to introduce one of the greatest friends of IdeaGen in the history of IdeaGen. When we sat down in that room with former Congressman Louis Stokes, Dr. Ken Moritsugu, Patrick Gaston, and others, we had a vision to bring together organizations from across sectors to help achieve the global goals. This whole summit, everything that we do, is always dedicated to the memory of the honorable global leader, Louis Stokes. And in that ilk, I'm about to introduce Gretchen O'Hara. Gretchen has believed in IdeaGen since the moment she got to know what we did, and she'll tell you that. And as a friend and as an organization, and now announcing that she is with Splunk, she's at Splunk, another company, she was with, with Microsoft previously, she is now going to continue changing the game in her new, new role, and I just have immense respect and admiration for this global leader, Gretchen O'Hara, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And what, a, what an amazing introduction. Um, I'm very humbled to be here. Uh, as George said, I, I started uh, partnering with IdeaGen. Um, Kim Smith here in the room will say that we, we had a brief conversation. I joined a panel, uh, and uh, that was the start of something that I thought was the most amazing organization that we could collectively come together in public and private partnerships to really solve some of the world's most challenging problems together with partnerships. Um, and so here we are uh, many years later, which is very exciting. And it's been exciting for me too, because at first I uh, have spent 25 years in the technology industry, and I want to give you some of my thoughts as it relates to technology for good. Um, I just left Microsoft. I spent 18 years as an executive there, most recently leading our artificial intelligence and sustainability business, and I loved every minute of it. But I uh, found an opportunity at a company named Splunk, basically the leading security and big data company, really supporting the largest and most innovative brands uh, in the world. And one of the things about Splunk that was so exciting is that as we think about sort of the next revolution, around big data, uh, having that ESG and that cultural uh, component in mind to do technology for good is something that was so important for me as I chose sort of my next step, and that, that is sort of why I'm here at Splunk as the, the global vice president and channel chief. So let me give you a couple just thoughts, and then we'll bring up the panel uh, moving forward. I want to talk about something that might be new to many people, and you might have heard about the digital divide. I want to talk about the data divide and the impact that we all have and the role we have to play here together. There is a growing disparity between the expanding use of data to create commercial value and the comparatively weak use of data to solve social and environmental challenges. So just think about that for a second. Just as the digital divide really had kept millions of people from accessing the advantages of the internet almost a generation ago, we are now here in a new data divide, separating the haves and the have-nots. Really, I'm here today to really talk about this divide and how we can close the gap together. And I ask all of you to lean in and we'll have this discussion over the for the rest of the day because I think this is one of the most critical things we can do around the impact for good. So let me start and just invite you to think for a second. We've listened to the panels on what was important and what was your SDG goal. And I want you to think about what is the cause that's most important to you? What is the goal that is most important to you? And visualize this in your mind. It might be something as a nonprofit. It might be a charity. It might be something just as a women's shelter. It's okay. What is that? that is important to you, that action that you want to take part of. Now imagine if data was used to help that cause, unleashing the knowledge and the insights and the connection, how might it help you and help them benefit? What are the benefits that we could all get if we could help predict and prevent and protect individuals, our climate, uh, our ecosystem from ever facing tragedy? What if we had data that we could use to help rehabilitate and connect the local communities, creating support systems during a time of crisis? 
So data is power. I think we've heard this now, data is power, data is king, every company is a data company. But power that has adeptly now been used by the commercial companies for a competitive advantage. Power that should not just be reserved for that community, but really needs to be made accessible for all. And so I want to frame up a couple things here before we start the panel. First, as I had mentioned, something called the data divide in which we're creating haves and have not when it comes to accessing technology and solutions to, to really solve the world's most pressing challenges. Second, I want to talk a few about a few examples that we can come across private and public sector nonprofits to make a meaningful difference when we think about that data. And lastly, as leaders here all in this room, what can we do together to really help move and close that data divide? Now, technology continues to grow, and we all know it moves in leaps and bounds, and it's emerging this new currency that's driving insight, decision-making, and ultimately, knowledge. Um, and knowledge is at the advantage. And so today, data now is being produced and consumed and stored at this dizzying rate. The world has witnessed the explosion of tenfold growth in data of zettabytes and since 2013, and we will see that doubling by 2025. What does that mean to all of us? Organizations now are mining, they're collecting, storing, securing more data to take advantage of what essentially now is this new digital currency, this new gold. But while this mountains of data are being leveraged at breakneck speed and, and keeping pace with the growth, they're really not being leveraged yet for the benefit of everybody. And that's why we're all here today. As I said when I began this discussion, there's a growing disparity on the expanding use of data to create commercial value and the comparatively weak use of data to solve social and environmental challenges. This data divide is something that I believe is absolutely separating us in the have and have nots, and we have an opportunity and an obligation together to really be able to change that. The haves include people and companies, organizations, plenty of data, fresh data that they have that they can use with the skills that they've been able to acquire to grow and thrive, while the have-nots are those that are operating with limited sense of data, um, have no ability or the skills to be effective with that data, and what ultimately happens is that stunts the economic growth and the social advancement as a result of this data divide. This is a crisis that we have to all come together. Now, collective progress continues to be lagging, and it's broadening the chasm as we speak because of the rate of change in the amounts of data that we're growing. And while these data strategies have certainly benefited commercial companies, but public sector nonprofits lag in the education, the skills of the future workforce, the tools, the talent to even access that information. That means individuals in underserved communities, in most cases, aren't even at the starting line of what will be the new world of a data-driven world. So what do we have to do about that? Let me just put a stark reality of an example in front of us. We can just look at COVID-19 as a great example, the crisis of the data divide. And if you remember back to the very, very beginning in the few weeks and months of the COVID pandemic, there was COVID testing work that was being done across the globe. But in particular, one example was a biohub uh, group uh, in initiative with the University of San Francisco, California, uh, or UCSF. This biohub built COVID testing lab and capabilities in actually seven days. They were able to get up and running this lab in seven days and be able to get test lab results back within 24 hours. Think about this, not knowing anything within really the first weeks of the pandemic. But what happened with data was that they made this available for all of California to use free for the public health system. And the public health system was using fax machines. And they could not keep up with the amount of information that was coming back from the data that was being provided uh, with UCSF. And so what was the answer? They could not only get the, the test results, they had to buy more fax machines just to keep up with the amount of cases that were happening. Can you imagine this? All of this data available in seven days, 24-hour results, that if we had more access 
to the data in the hands of everyone, we could have kept up and pace with the speed of which the pandemic was, was taking hold. It's just, I think, an unfortunate example of how data has been hindered in these areas because, you know, essentially, uh, we had not been able to provide that access in the way that we needed it across the public uh, with private sector. Now, there's also more disparity as we know that uh, spending on big data is almost a 200 to 300 billion dollar um, spending just in 2021 alone. Let me put this in perspective on this one. It's really been around three specific sectors that have had that spending, banking, manufacturing, and professional services. Think about this for a second. The majority of that spend still today on big data resides 50% in the United States alone. What does that now mean for everyone across the globe? We know also, according to IBM here in the room, 67% of nonprofits say that they are not having the expertise to do the data analytics work needed to help address what we're trying to solve today on the SDG 2030 agenda. And most government worldwide organizations have enormous challenges leveraging this data as well. And we know that 89% of the public sector respondents in the research that we've been doing here at Splunk are underprepared for the rapid growth that we need to go address these global challenges together. We know developing countries are already lacking the tools and resources and access to use big data and will continue to fall behind, disproportionately affecting marginalized communities and including our women and girls. So what do we have to do about this? These same countries we know are facing some of the greatest challenges, food insecurity, exposure to climate risk, limited health care systems, lower rates of electrification, digital access, more and more. Investing in and empowering countries to use data to address social and environmental challenges increases our likelihood holistically for success around the globe. And so, if we leave this unaddressed, the data digital divide will continue to exasperate these issues. So here we are, we're on this journey, we're here today. Thank you, George and Idea Gen Global for bringing us to have these hard conversations. We know we have a lot to do, but we're going in the right direction. And I wanna share just a couple examples. I love the panels this morning saying it's okay to start small. We do not have to have the biggest idea to be able to go make sustainable change. One example is just around gender equality. I co-founded an initiative, Women in Cloud, really focused on bringing uh, female representation for women-owned technology businesses. We started with an idea on a napkin. It's 97,000 members and growing. It's across the globe in partnership with many of you in this room and IdeaGen. You don't have to have everything figured out to start, but if we have the opportunity to build these partnerships, we can connect and bring access into data, into skilling, into making sure we have a workforce of our future generation available across the globe to help us really meet these needs. So let me share with you in closing before we start the panel, a couple thoughts as leaders that I want you to take away and, and how do we apply these to the rest of the conversations through the day. The very first one I think is, is, is important is what is your data culture? What is your data mindset culture in your organization? We need to combine that curiosity, that ingenuity, the tenacity to be able to go after these hard challenges together and go get them done. And we should think about every possible data source that's out there to be able to go do that. And we can get excited about playing with the data and exposing the factual ground and data supported answers when we unleash data for everybody around the globe. Second, we've talked a little bit about this so far, but make sure that you have a net zero data strategy that aligns to your sustainability goals. First and foremost, if you think about movement to the cloud alone, just doing that uh, reduces the CO2 footprint at least 80% by just getting out of your own data centers. So there's lots of ways that we can think about eliminating, uh, eliminating storage, waste, optimizing networks, our data transmission, driving efficiency across the business. So what is your uh, net zero data strategy specifically in your company? The third around partnerships. 
This means we don't have to go alone. There are so many publicly available data sources. How do we harness the power of these partnerships to make data available inside and outside of your organization for the betterment of everybody? That includes the distribution, the capability of healthcare systems, availability of resources for these skills, and so on and so on. And then we have to think about the importance of data and diverse data. And I love the conversation we talked about even in clinical trials just on the last uh, panel, which is if we want to close this data divide, we need to have diverse and representative data holistically for us to be able to use so that we do not see biases in the systems as we make in these changes um, across the globe. And we have to do that in collaboration with private and public partnerships. And the last I will just say to think about as we close the day and bring back into your organizations around the sharing of skills. And if you've heard me in the industry or in any of these summits in the past, I've spent a lot of my time focusing on the commitment to skilling underserved and underrepresented communities and the importance of getting data skills in the hands of everybody of future leaders and making sure that we know that as a growing percentage of economic activity is growing, that we are building data literate workforce across the globe. And that means those are jobs of tomorrow, understanding how to process and analyze data, knowing how to derive business insights and actions from this. It will open doors for opportunities for everyone, including our marginalized communities, to make sure that we are setting up for well-paying jobs and access and opportunity of the future. I know I've landed a lot of thoughts with you today, and I know there's a lot more for us to talk about. But with so many of the global crisis already unfolding, we need problem solvers, and that's why we're here. From all sectors, that's why we're here, to harness the power of data in a positive and social impact for good. This is the importance of technology for good. This is the importance of data unlocking knowledge, and knowledge unleashes power. The power cannot be reserved solely for the highest bidders. It needs to be equitably available for all, and that is our responsibility. That is our accountability. That is what we're here to do today. That is why I joined Splunk, and I'm committed to making sure that we do our part in addressing the UN SDG 2030 agenda. So I look forward to the upcoming panel uh, discussions today. I really appreciate the dialogue, and I'm learning so much with every single panelist. Please continue the conversation and the dialogue as we continue to build a safer, brighter, and more prosperous future. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.